Matt, I don't want to unnecessarily sound the alarms for a Mario Cristobal coach team, but can you think of a time in which two evenly matched teams played a blowout game in the regular season, then just a few weeks later played in a conference championship game, and it was a blowout again for the same team because I'm looking at three major incentives or advantages for the loser of the first game. One being you are playing for a conference championship. So regardless of how you arrive at that game, there should be incentive. And there's a problem in the locker room. If there's not incentive to go out there and play your very best and fight for a conference championship. Okay, I know we're playoff minded right now and all of that. But if you are playing for a conference championship, there's incentive number one that should never lead to a blowout between two evenly. And you could argue easily uh, the fact that Oregon has a better roster in regards to recruited talent than Utah. So number one, they're playing for a conference championship and they don't show up. Number two, they just their, their pride should have been wounded a few weeks earlier. They get annihilated by Utah like 38-7. There was a 38-7, 38-10. They were almost exactly the same games. Uh, and, and you turn around and you don't show the pride to stand up against that same team a few weeks later. And then number three, and you know this as well as anyone, Matt, the strategy given to an advantage of the losing team because they know what they need to fix. Versus the other team thinking, okay, do we play it straight the same way? Or do we need to kind of counter what we did maybe unnecessarily? Because we we certainly had them the first game. And there being typically you see a much closer game, if not the other team winning that second matchup. This invites a very particular conversation. I think that the folks at Miami who now have uh, Mario Cristobal as head coach, I think there has to be at least a little bit of worry. Now he's assembled a rock star coaching staff, Josh Gaddis as offensive coordinator he has Charlie strong on his staff as well. And, and, you know, it does seem as though Miami is set up to do well. And I have Miami winning the ACC coastal, but I have to admit, wow, that quarterback development under Mario Cristobal is a real problem. Cause I don't know if any of you out there watching on the voice of college football have noticed, but Anthony Brown is tearing it up with the Baltimore Ravens in the NFL preseason. He's looked really good. Uh, my colleagues at Duckswire, you know, are writing about that. And so, you know, Justin Herbert was not a dominant quarterback at Oregon. Marcus Arroyo, who was the offensive coordinator at the time, he had him throwing screen passes uh, almost all the time. That, that offense did not attack opponents down the field. Very conservative, very pulled in. You know, there's the old joke about, you know, who could stop Michael Jordan most, you know, regularly and reliably? Dean Smith. You know, Dean Smith was able to, Hold him under 20 points a game because he four wouldn't corners. play too much. You know, the four-corner <laughs> offense, exactly. So Mario Cristobal has stopped Justin Herbert and apparently Anthony Brown. But, of course, you know, whereas Dean Smith equipped Michael Jordan to be the best basketball player of all time, or it's certainly, you know, in the top three, the, that kind of conversation, you know, Mario Cristobal did not equip Anthony Brown uh, to be good, or at least he didn't get any much of anything out of Anthony Brown, he goes to the pros and, you know, suddenly he gets a level of coaching that, you know, unlocks his talents. And of course, Justin Herbert goes to the Chargers and, you know, he immediately is just throwing these bombs all over the field. And you didn't see anything like that at Oregon. So that is that is a, a very fascinating plot point relative to Mario Cristobal and how Oregon developed its quarterbacks. And that does pretty neatly lead, in, lead into, you know, how is Kenny Dillingham going to develop quarterbacks in Eugene under Dan Lanning. Of course, you know, Bo Nix is used to playing against Georgia and Kirby Smart's defense. So we get to see in week one how much he's learned. It's going to be fascinating. Yeah, you wonder if Dan Lanning is confident with playing a Bo Nix who knows the Georgia defense. But on the other hand, is that really the advantage or does the advantage rely on the Georgia defense and – them preparing for Bo Nix and knowing Bo Nix very well in three successful attempts against Bo Nix. Um, the fact that Kenny Dillingham did coach Nix at Auburn, that's going to be a key. So like in many yeah. ways, Kenny Dillingham is like the person I'm going to be most interested in. How equipped does he have Bo Nix for the showdown against Kirby Smart? Because Bo Nix isn't going to do it by himself. Bo Nix needs a good plan. Enter Kenny Dillingham. 